Hey everybody, hipster username here. Today, I'm gonna walk through my creative process as I go through and create something completely new. I'll kind of talk out loud while I'm doing it so you can understand how I'm thinking about creating uh, new images, all of the steps that I'm taking and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hopefully it's insightful and helpful and I uh, hope it inspires some new creations of your own. Uh, so to get started, the way that I think about prompting, uh, I typically start with a text to image on the text to image tab. Um, I think about it in this way, and I've shared this uh, with a couple of you on Discord as well, uh, but I like to think about subject, I like to think about style, uh, I think about quality modifications, so how do I make sure that the uh, quality of the imagery is, is high, uh, and then I think about aesthetics, uh, so what is the, uh, the mood, what is the, the, the general vibe. Uh, we only want good vibes, we don't want any bad vibes, so I try to make sure that uh, there's some aesthetic terms in there that help guide it towards what I'm looking to see. Uh, so a uh, prompt that I uh, just got on a random prompt generator of something to, to produce uh, is an elemental lizard, um, which I think is actually gonna be pretty difficult. Um, these models have a weird time with lizards uh, dragons, anything of that sort. And so it's actually the perfect case for a canvas, um, but we're, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the way that I'm gonna approach this, uh, I'm gonna get, you know, obviously a lizard in here, but I'm probably gonna be more specific. I'll do like a chameleon. Um, we're gonna do like scaled uh, skin, intricate details, hyper-realistic. Uh, we'll get some photography terms in there because typically that that can help with kind of the the overall depth that you get from the image that comes out. So um, we'll just do a uh, Canon 5D. Uh, we'll do something that gives it a little bit more of an artistic bent. Um, so uh, something that you'll notice is even if I'm getting some of these terms that are going to come out with a more realistic output, um, I still like to have something that softens that. So, I'll, you know, I'll throw in soft oil painting a lot. I also have picked up this, this habit of describing the texture of the paint. Um, and so in this case, um, I'll do like liquid digital art. So I've got a lot of the style covered at this point, and now I'm gonna start getting some quality terms in. One thing that you'll often see my canvases use is award-winning. Um, I won't use that this time. I'll try to think of something new for the quality term. Uh, let's see. So featured might work. Showcase, portfolio. Those will all kind of tend towards the kind of highlights of uh, the model. And lastly, we'll go ahead and throw in some aesthetic terms as well. So because this is some form of elemental lizard that I'm trying to go for, we'll do a uh, dry, rocky desert cinematic lighting, dramatic lighting, and just to throw a wrench in, we'll do uh, cover art, album cover art. Uh, now we get to the negative prompts. Uh, and again, there's two ways to do negative prompts. Uh, the uh, original old school way of just typing your uh, stuff in brackets. Uh, but since we do have a negative prompts box, uh, I'll go ahead and throw those in here. What I'm typically trying to do with negative prompts is uh, throw in some things that I think are categorically undesirable. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some things that I don't want. I don't want to sketch. Uh, I don't want amateur work. I don't want pixelated things. Um, a good tip if you're thinking about other uh, negative prompts is to try to find single words that encompass the concepts that you're trying to avoid. And what I'll do just to kind of wrap this up uh, and throw something else kind of random in there, you'll notice I do this pretty often. I try to think of something that probably is just like so bizarrely different than what I'm going for that there's not really a concern that it would uh, cause any issues if I threw it in. And hey, who knows, maybe it's helping. Uh, in this case, I'll put taco salad. Um, you know, I don't want that in my image. Uh, if it was gonna include it, I don't want it, but it probably wasn't. And so it's pretty harmless to throw in there. Uh, and I think it's fun. Uh, so my settings, what I'll typically do, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and generate three or four uh, 
I, I like the DPM PP2 at 30 and 10. You can go up on the config scale. You can go up on the CFG scale, but I typically find that 10 is a, a good number here. Uh, what I'll go ahead and do also is turn on a high res optimization. Uh, I'm gonna keep it at the base of 75 because I think it does a pretty good job most of the time. Uh, and we'll go ahead and see what we get. Uh, Although I do want to change this to a little bit of a larger size and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've got some decent ones here. This is a little bit more realistic than I was aiming for, uh, but that doesn't mean it's unworkable. I think we'll go ahead and go with this one. Uh, what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to send this to image to image. And I'm going to keep these settings mostly the same, but I'm actually going to go ahead and upscale this pretty significantly. Um, I'm going to turn this into a 1500 by 1500, only because um, I think we can get some more details out of it this way. Um, and you know, I'll go ahead and put this at 0.6. And then let's see if I can figure out why this came out. So real, I guess we'll take hyper-realistic out. Uh, we'll put the Canon 5D out as well. And we'll go ahead and keep that as is. Uh, so we'll get another four here. And we'll go. Okay, so this was still pretty much a photo. Some weird stuff happening too with the uh, the eyes moving around. Let's try that again with a higher image to image strength. Maybe I can get the style to change a little bit more here. Okay, so it's starting to get a little bit more artistic. Uh, the number of eyes on this thing is pretty creepy, uh, but I actually like it. I think this makes uh, makes it a little bit more fantastical. Um, what you'll notice is that because this is such a large image, it's 1500 by 1500, and because I have the image to image strength pretty high, I'm getting a lot of uh, kind of secondary uh, generations. So, you know, it created this little fella here and it created a head. Uh, it looks like there's like a thousand legs in this thing. Uh, so what may be a better idea as I try this out uh, would be to keep this at a lower res while I'm trying to get the style correct. Um, so I'll even turn this up just a little bit more and I'll probably go ahead and turn up the soft oil painting, liquid digital art. I'll probably add um, creature concept art uh, monster as well. Um, just to see if I can get this to to really uh, push this push this a little bit more. So I'm, I'm going to keep this a little bit lower, um, and then we'll blow it up in a secondary run. Okay, that I dig this one. Background on this one's nice. Uh, but we'll take this guy and send this image to image. Uh, I'm gonna blow this up to uh, 1536 by 1536, but I'm gonna take the uh, image to image strength down this time. All I wanna do is just upscale this with, um, with the image to image process. I don't really wanna get any extra heads or feet. And we'll cancel after the current iteration, see what we get. So we've got that, that. Take this guy to the canvas. And now we've got uh, the base of something that's gonna look pretty cool. So the first thing that I probably wanna do is extend this out uh, a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and extend out to the left. And I'm realizing I need to put my image image strength up for that to look any good at all. Yeah, 
And because it's looking pretty good, I'm probably just gonna do one. So I don't really think that there's a whole lot that could go wrong or get much better than the first one that I just did. So we'll take that one. And then I'll go ahead and extend on the other side as well, just a tad bit. And you'll notice that there's some kind of uh, clear differences in uh, texture on the clouds. We'll get to that eventually with some of the in-painting stuff. Uh, but for now, I'm going to focus a lot on the lizard itself. Actually, you know, you know, I'm going to I'm going to start with the background because I think the background will be easier to get um, looking pretty good. Uh, so, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask and we'll go ahead and select this. And what, what I'm doing right now is, you know, the bounding box is focusing on this area over to the right. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and take out my subject right now and just put this as like dark rain clouds, uh, thunder, lightning. Uh, and I want to go ahead and just uh, focus my bounding box as much on that type of subject. Again, uh, as I've said in previous videos, your bounding box doesn't know what else is going on. It just knows what's happening in here. And so if I told it to, you know, if I use the exact same prompt as before, I had lizard and all that kind of stuff in there, it would try to find a lizard in the clouds. I don't want that. What I'm trying to do right now is mostly just in paint on uh, this this kind of cloudy area. And so uh, I'll just take this subject out and focus on the dark rain clouds. Okay. And we'll keep moving along here. Probably important to snap the grid, so I'm going along the top. Um, and I will start picking up more of this uh, this lizard here if I don't watch out. So I may have to put some different prompt in. And one thing you'll notice is uh, you typically are not going to want to do all the way up to the edge on either side of the bounding box. Uh, you'll get some weird seams when you do that. And so I'm just going to clean that up every time I generate. And then I'll get over to this left hand side. Now, as I get to the bottom here, I'm going to probably put um, more of the focus on uh, desert mountains. Uh, I'll even put Utah in here because there's kind of that vibe uh, plateau dark rain clouds, thunder, lightning, blah, 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 blah. And we'll go ahead and get all of this stuff going here. And I'm probably, you know, I want to keep a lot of this structure, I think. So I'm going to turn down my image to image strength a bit. But now we've got kind of some more detail back here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is probably pop down here and just clean up some of this stuff. All right, we're starting to get some nice detail in. Uh, and now we're gonna do this little bit of challenging part with the lizard body inside of it. Um, and so what, what I'm gonna actually do uh, is so that the bounding box has the context of this, I'm gonna put uh, lizard in front of Desert Mountains, Utah, Plateau, blah, blah, blah. And that way it actually is focusing on this. This is kind of taking all of the attention uh, from the system for the lizard prompt but it actually does have all of the rest of the stuff getting a little bit of attention as well uh, in the background. Again, wanna make sure that I'm not going right up to the edge on the bounding box on either side. Uh, and so we'll just get that. Move down. And hope that this works for this part of the body as well. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think this side needs a little bit of work as well. We'll go ahead and mask the bottom part of this side of the image. And then we'll get this bottom part and we should be done with most of the background. I don't 
like that one as much. I'm going to do a couple of iterations here just to see what I can get. Uh, that one looks okay. Okay, so now I've got the background here, which is pretty dope. Uh, it's kind of this like nice cinematic lightning setting uh, a pretty good stage for this lizard to be uh, pretty awesome. Uh, now, my, my goal here is elemental lizard. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out what element I want. Uh, I think originally when I was thinking about this, I, you know, I gravitated towards fire. Uh, but now I'm kind of thinking this needs to be a lightning lizard with uh, the background that, that we've got going on. And so I want to kind of turn this into a uh, lightning lizard. Um, what I'm going to do, and I, this is purely just me seeing what happens here. Uh, I'm going to take out all of this stuff. Uh, thunder, lightning, all works fine. But I'm going to go ahead and blend this. Uh, and the blend prompt is uh, a pretty useful tool for instilling certain elements or characteristics uh, when you really want to kind of penetrate the entire prompt with an underlying set of secondary prompts. And so th the way to think about this is when you're blending two prompts together, you're kind of taking the latent concepts of each individual prompt and kind of pushing them into each other. The way that I, I like to analogize that is kind of like mixing paint. So in paint bucket one, I've got this original prompt that I had, which is like th lizard, thunder, lightning, so on and so forth. And this second prompt that I have is gonna be part of this, uh, but really focused on kind of the elemental uh, component that I'm trying to instill. And so we're going to use words like electric, lightning, scaled, lizard, creature, monster, concept, art. And we'll go ahead and throw in an award winning in there. And I'll just put that in front of award winning creature, monster, concept, art. Okay. And we'll blend that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter blend on the second prompt. I don't want that to overtake it, but maybe I'll use something like 0.3 or 0.4. We'll go with 0.4. And then we'll go ahead and start in painting. Now, one thing that I want to call out is I'm not using uh, an in painting model. I'm using uh, just a regular image generation model. And, and there is a big difference uh, when you use an in painting model. And when you're using a normal model to do in painting, it is very much being informed by the colors and the existing image. Uh, and it is effectively doing an image to image uh, so if I were to take this to the image to image tab and transform it, it, it's kind of doing that and then merging the new image that it's generated with the old image in the areas that I've masked. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and try to give this a little bit of a thundery look. Um, one thing that I think would be kind of cool uh, is if I had a little bit of a transparent blue here to color this guy a little bit darker in some spots. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of pass this over uh, his scales. So I want him to be a little bit darker than he is right now. And then I want there to be some kind of like lightning white uh, streaks inside of it. So I'm just going to scribble these in. I'm going to have to in paint at a pretty high strength to make these not look terrible. Um, but I'm OK with that. Uh, and then I will probably want this eye to change quite a bit. And so let's see, kind of do a darker blue here. I'm just going to paint over this eye completely. Uh, do a lightning white inside. A black center. And we'll give this a shot. We'll see what we get. It could it could look terrible, but you know I'm optimistic here. Uh, so we'll take all of this and try to get all of these spikes as well. And then we're just going to roll the dice and see what we get. Uh, which is the name of the game here. Uh, so we're gonna give this guy a shot. Uh, we'll turn this up to 67 and we'll see what we get. Okay, it's got some cool looks here. This one's got a definitely a strange look with those teeth. 
Uh, this one looks pretty sick. I'm not, I'm not getting as much of the lightning as I wanted in the actual flesh itself of this creature, but we can fix that later. Uh, overall, I think the, the look here is probably more of what I'm going for. Um, and so then we'll just continue this on down. Uh, and again, I'm gonna have to get the brush here and do another uh, set of coloring down this side of the body. We'll get these legs in as well. And we'll get some lighting. Didn't really do what I wanted it to do last time, but you know, just to be consistent here and hopefully get the same thing, go with that. These spikes. This one, you definitely got a little bit of a different body here. It's it's starting to, to pick up some weird stuff. Uh, this one actually looks the best though, so I'm just gonna keep that. And I'm actually okay with this end being a little bit more green. Eh, I'm gonna say that and then I change my mind. So I'm just gonna do some painting over here. And we'll go ahead and mask this guy. I'm gonna have to clean up that foot later, but that's okay. Uh, let's background and this. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a uh, head in here. It, it's kind of a, a gamble. Um, this is really going to try to have something. It, it, as I'm looking at this, when I look at the bounding box, a lizard prompt would typically have the lizard's head inside of the image. And because I've got none of that lizard's head, if I didn't really try to fight this uh, and, and control the generation to really focus this, on what I am seeing or what it would be generating if I did this in an image to image. So, so to step back, I'm asking myself if I wanted to prompt the system to generate what was inside of this bounding box, what would I need to prompt it? How would I get it to focus on just that part of the lizard's body? And that is why I'm trying to figure out ways that I can remove the head, but keep all of the other context there. Uh, this may or may not work. I might have to try this again, but th that's why I'm using that prompt. Okay, and that seemed to work. Um, this one's got a little bit of a weird tail going on. I don't know that I love any of the tails except for maybe that one. But I actually like the leg on this one a little better. I think we can fix the leg easier than we can fix the tail, so we'll go this way. Okay, so now we've got uh, kind of a colorized uh, lizard but we don't really have a whole lot of that lightning elemental uh, flare on it. Uh, and so what I'm gonna try to do now is I'm gonna take some of the color out of this eye. Uh, I'm gonna try to give it some kind of an aura. Uh, do this very transparent. And then we'll do some like lightning. Try to get it to interpret this as electricity, aura, energy, elemental magic. Really, really pushing it here. Um, aura of electric lightning scale lizard. Okay, we'll try that. Um, and then we'll actually put this a little bit down and see if we can go ahead and try this. Now it's starting to get a little bit, little bit electric. And I'm actually gonna turn this up a little bit because it was keeping my drawings there. Okay, this one's kind of cool. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix some of those clouds after this, but it's definitely got the look I was going for with kind of that like electric uh, current flowing through its spikes. Uh, and so what we're gonna have to do is carry that same concept down here. Uh, you know, I left that head in the entire time and it didn't seem to hurt. So I'll just leave that again again. Uh, we'll turn this transparent. Turn this a little bit smaller as we head down towards the bottom of the tail. A color. Go ahead and finish up this tail here. And we'll leave this at 54 and we'll see what that does. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted. 
Uh, that tail is kind of funky, but I, I don't care. I like the uh, I like the look of the electricity. And so we've really kind of created a, a nice aura here on the back of this lizard. I am digging it. So now we probably just need uh, a little bit more of an electric look on this head. And so I'm gonna focus the bounding box here uh, just to this area around the head, uh, which is a 640 by 640. And the technique that you'll see me often do in videos to get higher detail is to use the scale before processing uh, feature. By default, what this is gonna do is focus on areas that are smaller than 512 by 512. When it's turned to the auto mode, uh, if you focus on an area that's really small, you'll see scaled bounding box here is 512 by 512. That means that it is automatically uh, applying the scaled feature uh, to this area. That auto will only focus on small areas. If I've got something that's bigger, like the 640 by 640, it's just gonna scale to 640 by 640. It's effectively using this block. But what I wanna do is I wanna manually increase that. Uh, and I wanna take it to 1024 by 1024. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go even higher. I'm gonna go to 1536. Uh, and this is going to actually generate a 1500 by 1500 or 1536 by 1536 image. So this won't work if your graphics card uh, isn't as uh, beefy or powerful, or if you don't have as much VRAM. Uh, but if you do have that, or if you're using a uh, hosted service, uh, you'll, you'll find that this is uh, something that you can do. And what I'm gonna do now, uh, take head out of my negative prompt because I actually do want uh, the head. I'll leave taco salad because I don't want taco salad. And we'll go in to the mouth of this beast uh, and try to make some lightning. Uh, so let's go zoom in here. I realize I need a little bit of a mouth here. Get this look, and if I'm thinking about it, this mouth would probably have some blue, blue in it. This would be illuminated by this lightning. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna cover all of that up with a mask. And then I'm going to mouth build with electricity. And this one's a little bit of a sketchy prompt. I don't know if this is actually going to work for me. Uh, typically, you know, doing stuff like mouth filled with XYZ is not really how the technology works. It doesn't understand what I'm asking for, but I'm kind of betting that focusing the attention on the mouth and then following on with this stuff will give, give it enough of a gist of what I'm hoping for that it'll work. Okay, it doesn't look exactly like I wanted, but it's getting there. This is probably the closest. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit more of the mouth into consideration here. I'm gonna let it regenerate more of that, and I'm just gonna go a little bit higher. This could be a bad thing or a good thing. Well, uh, it was a bad thing. <laughs> This is definitely not what I was going for. Um, what, it, what is happening here is it's kind of interpreting this uh, as a completely separate creature and it's creating like heads on it and stuff like that. So it's, it's, I've given it too much freedom uh, and that's not what I hoped for at all. So I'll take this back. Uh, I'm going to take away some of the freedom I gave it. I'm not going to let you regenerate all of this anymore. And I'm going to turn this back down to something like 0.65. And we'll probably just do a couple of loops here. Okay, this is okay, but I've realized now that the mouth that I gave it is way too large. So I'm just going to fill this in. probably also want to guide it to understand the mouth is closing here. So we'll just give it a little bit of a direction. And it's okay if there's this highlight on the ridge of the mouth. And this one right here. Actually, now that I think about it, I think that would confuse it. So just leave it at 
that. Maybe I'll give it some teeth down here so that it perceives this is closing its mouth. And yeah, we'll give that a shot. Uh, and one thing that I'm also going to do just to see if this helps is close up of a lizard. Because we're kind of focusing on this head area. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Do that head again because I like what it was doing with the, the depth of it. Focus and hoping that this sees that as a mouth that's closed. And we'll take this down just a little bit just in case. It's better. It's better. Uh, I think I like this one. These eyes down here on, on this nose are a little bit funky, but I'm going to accept this anyways. Um, because I've got so much going on right now, I'm also just going to go ahead and merge my visible layers so that this is a new image and gives me a little bit more speed. Um, that can happen if you're doing a lot of generations like this. Uh, just merging it down will speed up your process a little bit more. And what I want to do now is I just want to add some more lightning back into this mouth. Um, I think it took a little bit of that away as we tried to fix, fix things. Um, and so we'll add some lightning back in. Lightning, mouth. Got like 7,000 references to lightning in this. Hopefully it picks that up and we'll do and it turned those into some gnarly teeth, uh, which was not what I was going for. Uh, let's try this a little bit higher and pray that this doesn't completely mess up the mouth, but let's try going into the whole mouth here. Yeah, it's, it's just perceiving those as teeth, which I don't love and I don't think looks very good. So I'm gonna discard, I'm gonna take this back. I'm just gonna undo all of my drawings here. I am thinking about how I can get this to do what I want it to do. Uh, so let's do this. First things first, mouth probably shouldn't be closing over here. I'm gonna keep this the same on both sides of the mouth. It seems like it would go at least that far back. We can take this blue color, fill in here. This is about the point in the process where I think about how nice it would be to have some select tools in the canvas. Don't worry, I think about it a two. Get this back here, and I'm probably going to do something that's a little bit darker towards the back. And I'll get some of this. And maybe because it's blue instead of white, I can get this to take this down to one pixel. All right, we have been diligent in trying to get this to work. Let's give it a shot. Take that down to 0.48 because I don't want it to do too much to this. Not exactly what I'd hoped for. So let's try it one more time. Maybe a little bit lighter. That's got some of what I was hoping for in it. Keep that one, and we'll do it again. That'll do. Uh, what I don't love is the skunk and the teeth here, so I'm just going to fix this, and we'll do one last pass, and then I'll accept where the teeth are at. And I think this ended up in an okay spot. It's got like a little bit of a electricity thing forming in the back of its throat, which kind of looks cool. Definitely looks elemental. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get rid of these two eyes and the nose and then fix up the eyes a little bit to be a little bit more electrical and then get the feet, maybe the tail, and then I think we'll call this done. So let's keep moving on. Um, I'll go ahead and focus just on this. Uh, I think this is weird. I don't like eyes in my nose. So I'm just gonna black these out. Uh, maybe get some of this kind of lightning in here. Hopefully this just doesn't come out like weird nose hair. And again, we're gonna have to focus on just this 
spot. So, lightning nostrils. Let's hope the model was trained on some lightning nostrils. Uh, we'll take out close up of a. We'll take out mouth filled with. Leave all this other stuff in. Close up of lightning nostrils. I, I am pretty confident it was not trained on lightning nostrils. Got like a 93% certainty on that, but we're gonna give it a shot. It's gotta look better than eyes in my nose. Yeah, it's kind of like a weird, like weird nose hair looking thing. Let's see if we can lighten it up and see more of that lightning color. Really have to go down here. This could be dangerous, but I'm gonna give it a little bit more freedom. Give me some lightning. This one's okay. I think I regret doing it on both of those though. And there's a little bit too much going on. So I'm gonna just black this out and give it one more pass. Okay, that one looks okay. We're gonna leave it at that. At least it's not eyeballs in, in his nose. Okay, we'll go for the eyes. And this one should be pretty simple. There's a lot of color in here for the uh, model to work with. So I'm just gonna select the eye. Uh, we're gonna do electric eye lightning in the blend. And that's a 0.5 close up of Lizard eye, electric, blah, 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 blah. Okay, invoke. Blended it and blurred it quite a bit. I'm wondering what I can do. Okay, so I've got a weird idea. Uh, I think it should work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two passes. I'm gonna do the first one I'm going to kind of encourage it to ignore the fact that this is a lizard. This is going to be weird, but it's an experiment. Uh, I'm going to try to get some of this lightning going in here. And we're going to do something completely different. We're going to do blue solar eclipse electric storm Take all this stuff out. Lightning. Spell that right. Lightning bolts. Shocking color. It's a little bit of a pun. Take out monster. Take out creature. Take out all of this stuff like dry rocky desert. And then this one will do black hole surrounded by electricity lightning we can take out scaled lizard warm and we'll take out creature and monster concept let's just make this digital art and we're going to give this some more freedom here what i'm doing is i'm effectively if you imagined that i did an image to image with this specific block inside of the bounding box and i gave it this prompt it's going to wildly shift the image, but because I've constrained it just to the eye, what I should see is that the majority of the weirdness around that is going to be at the seam of the eye, which I can come back in and fix in a second pass with in painting. So I'm okay with it looking a little weird, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get the gist of what I want inside of the core eye done by thinking about it in a different way. And so we'll give this a shot. It's gonna be a little bit higher of an image to image strength, maybe not that high though. And we'll go ahead and, and give it a shot. Now that is electric. Uh, I like that. Uh, it's more of the electric look I was going for, even if it has stopped looking as much like an eye. I'm okay with that. Uh, primarily because I'm going to do another pass over this. Um, I think I like this one the best. Uh, take away the mask. Take this and 
try to give it back its iris. It's definitely looking a lot more electric. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask this again. And do one more, uh, but this time I'm going to add a third prompt to the blend. Lizard eye. Uh, and that's just, that's it right there, lizard eye. And then that's the first one. So I'm gonna add another weight here. I'm gonna make the other two both 0.4 relative to the lizard eye. And then we'll just give that a shot. Okay, it's got some weird planet stuff going on uh, in this which I'm trying to decide if I hate or love. I don't think I like it. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna take this back down. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is, I think black hole is what's giving it the planetary stuff. Uh, we'll just turn this into um, iris surrounded by, and then we'll also do iris electric storm. And we'll give that a shot. It's really doing some weird stuff with this. Uh, this one's kind of cool. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the image to image strength down. Uh, I think I'm losing too much of my electricity by going high. This one's got a little bit more. Bump it up just a little bit. And do one more pass. That looks good. I'll leave it there. Okay, that works. I got my electric eye that I wanted. Uh, the beast is glowing with electricity. Uh, we've got a little bit of a weird foot down here and some work on the clouds to do and maybe this tail. So we're gonna go back large because uh, I think we'll find ourselves not getting what we want if we don't. Uh, we're gonna need to fix this prompt up because it has been uh, specifically focused on that. So uh, why don't we just do this? Electric. Lots of darts. I think that should work out okay for us. And then I'm gonna come in with my brush, get some of this dirt and just try to clean up this foot a little bit. What I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to guide the regeneration of these feet a little bit. I'm gonna do a pretty heavy mask on it, all of this stuff, but I wanna try to give it some good color to work with. Again, I'm not using an in-painting model, so uh, it's gonna take a lot of what I've drawn here and actually use that uh, to guide the generation. Uh, we'll go ahead and give this a shot. Let's turn this up just a little bit. And yikes! Uh, we have created some like lizard monstrosities on this feet. Uh, and we do not like this. We do not like this at all. Uh, so what's happening here is again, because, because the image doesn't have like a full lizard in it and because we're dealing with such um, high sizes, it's really, really grasping onto this as like needing to generate new bodies. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and focus down here and see if we can really just focus on this as a lizard foot. Uh, this is a bit of a gamble. Lizard foot, lizard foot. Give it a shot, and that's not enough. It is not enough. This one's gonna be tough, I think, because uh, it's trying to create some new lizards out of this. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to the big size. I'm gonna turn off my scaling. don't want to do anything more than what I need to and I'm going to try to fix this with very light edits 
looped back a couple of times. So we'll go back to our image to image, do this at 0.35 lizard, just focus on the lizard, try to get it to see a singular lizard. What we'll do is add the word crowd in here, as well as the word nest. Maybe avoid having like multiple things as a result. Take that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just looping this back a couple of times. I'm hoping that with very light edits, um, it won't have the freedom to create new lizards. And doing it a couple of times, I can kind of guide it uh, generally to looking better than it was before. It probably won't be perfect, uh, but we'll live with good enough. Okay, there's definitely some weirdness with this. Uh, probably try to get this one more brush pass uh, and then we'll call it a day. I'll leave this foot alone. I'm just going to try to regenerate this guy one more time. Okay, it's a little bit funky. But I think it looks a lot better. It's got some weirdness to it that I think I am okay with because it's kind of a fantasy creature, anyways. Um, but now we'll take it over here. I'm gonna snap to grid and we'll fix up the bottom half of this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this out to include as much of the lizard head as I can. That way I can really just try to not worry about it doing some weirdness with this. And this brushing should be a lot easier. Trying to slim up this tail without adding too much weirdness to the body shape. I think this could be okay. We might want to get the top of this and slim it up a little bit from the top. Give this a couple passes at a low image to image strength. Looks okay, but I think I've shaped the body a little poorly and the color I picked for the background isn't really working for me. So I'm gonna take this, put this in the background instead. Just add some darkness to this. more lightning on this tail and we'll mask it also going to go ahead and increase the steps here because we're dealing with such a low image to image strength I just want to make sure that it's got enough opportunities to correct details okay what I realize now is it has interpreted that area below the tail as part of the lizard's body. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't mind that as much. I actually think it's cool to have kind of the entire body uh, sitting on the ground going to the back. Uh, so I'm going to merge my visible layers and just correct the colors of this because I like what it did. I just want to fix it up a little bit. So I get added a bit of an extra toe here, so I'll just get this while I'm at it. Okay. This looks okay. I want to fix this one thing. Making sure that there's no crease in that tail. It just kind of continues on. I think that looks okay. So now I've got my elemental lizard. Uh, most everything that was majorly uh, an issue has been addressed. I'll go ahead and save this to my gallery. And we'll take a look at the viewer. 
pretty good. If I were to spend some more time on this, I probably would still play around with the mouth a little bit, uh, fix up some of the feet, um, maybe spend some more time on, on some of the details just to make sure that it uh, was perfect. But overall, I'm pretty happy with where we landed uh, in a short amount of time. Uh, I think we, we created kind of what we set out to, a uh, large elemental lizard. Hopefully that was insightful and helpful. If you've got feedback or questions, feel free to share them on Discord. Until next time, hipster username, signing off.